So today we're potentially going to be writing out my GT86. Hey up everybody and welcome back to the channel. So if you've not got any clues from that little intro there, we're going to be putting a few stuff on the car. Now, by the time this video comes out, I should have some more parts arriving in the post. These are just things that I picked up at tracks over in Donington. I don't know whether they're going to be a permanent addition. I just want to see what they look like. But there's three things that I'm going to do. And of course, if you are new here, then welcome, welcome to the channel. If you do like this sort of content, and trust me, it's not going to be small mods all the time. I'm just doing this as a filler while my mods come. It's taken a little longer than expected. But remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel and keep up to date with what I am doing. Just before we get into it, I want to say a big thanks over to the guys at Cody Shop. They're always there at meets and events as well, and this is where I got these parts from. They do a load of stuff. I mean, they're mainly known for the steering wheels, as far as I'm aware, and that's something which is going to be coming in the future as well. But let's have a look and talk about the things that I'm going to do. First thing that we're going to do is add a sun strip onto the car. Now, I do want to get the roof done in gloss black, and I think the extended gloss black onto the windscreen will accentuate that sort of coupe line so that's the first thing that we're going to put on to the car now these are relatively simple to put on they are universal so you may need to cut them but they're normally longer than they need to be so just lay it out get the middle point right and then just cut down make sure you squeegee it down properly and apply it right or else it's going to look terrible the second thing that we're going to be putting on the car just handily came out of the box but it's one of them universal rubber splitter things now the reason why i've got this is something that's coming in the post this week the week before that you're going to see this um, i just wanted to try this out just to see whether i want a proper splitter or not if it's feasible with the area that i live in there's a lot of speed bumps around here in the immediate area so i don't want to be going down and scraping a splitter when i was paid 100 200 300 pound for one so this is going to go on there it's a rubber splitter it is flexible relatively easy to apply so again it's a universal kit it said you can use them for canards as well and i wouldn't recommend doing that because rubber canards will just look terrible so essentially what you need to do you cut it where there's curves on the bottom of the bumper but it's relatively simple you just got the 3m on there take it off clean all the underside of the lip make sure it's dry apply it give it a bit of heat let it stick and then what you need to do at the end is cut the ends off to line up with the edges of the bumper the third and final thing that i'm going to be doing to the car today is debadging the toyota and the gt86 off of the back as well as the toyota badges on the front and the back the toyota badges on the front and the back are going to get sprayed black so i'm going to spray them gloss black just to give them a nice contrast to the car they are like a chromy silver at the moment which i've never never really been a fan of if i'm honest i'm in two minds of what to do with the gt86 badge on the back i might spray it black and put it underneath the toyota badge on the back giving it a sort of super look you know where they have the badges underneath otherwise it's just going to stay off of the car so again give it a little bit of heat to the badge get a bit of fishing wire or something that's relatively thin that can get behind it wiggle it away until it comes off you need to get something like a bug or spray remover or something like that just to get the residue off and then give it a quick little polish just so it blends in because obviously if they've been on the car since it came out there's going to be some paint degradation around it so the paint behind it will look a lot better so it's just about blending that in and making it look as good as possible i do want to do as much of this on camera as possible but i'm sure you can appreciate that putting a sun strip on putting a splitter on measuring it up getting it all right and whilst filming and recording is quite difficult so you'll see parts of it you'll see before you'll see after and i'll talk to you about any sort of hurdles that I come across along the way and of course i'm going to try and get you guys to see the badges today i do need to spray them a couple of times let them dry let them cure and then pop them back onto the car if you've seen this video you will see it towards the back end but let's get straight into it Right, so we're going to start off with the sun strip and just to just to prepare the windscreen we've got a little sponge here with some washing up liquid and some water on it the reason why i'm using washing up liquid is because it'll get rid of any protectants or coatings that are previously on there and then there's something to dry it down with Cause I've been on my way 
Right, so the reason why I did that is if you look at this, you can see that it's full of dirt and that's what's going to be stopping the sunstrip from laying on it smoothly. The reason why I've got this on, by the way, I wanted to give you guys a bit of a different perspective on what's going on, like a first person perspective. I do have a head one as well, but I'm just trying out the chest one for the moment. But I'm just going to go get the sunstrip. We're going to go get it teed up, see what size it is, see where we need to cut it, and then we'll start popping it on. Right, so I've got the sunstrip here. Let's just get it out of the packaging. Sorry if you're hearing the background noise there. So as you can see here, it's a gloss black sunstrip, nicely held together with this little tape. See the thing is with these universal ones is they will come larger than what you need so the best thing is to do is to just put it over the car, see where it fits, get it to where you want it like if you wanted it sort of here then you'd cut it up at the top there where the windscreen is just there and then do it that way but it's just a matter of fine tuning it, getting it straight is the most important thing I could possibly think of but I'm just going to do this maybe off camera just so I can get it done properly. Right, so we've just got a little bit of wind which isn't great but what I'm trying to do is just to get one corner off and then just tack it where you need it. And at this point you can just start, as long as you've got these little two tabs here, you can just start pulling this off and then laying it down. first bit is usually the hardest bit because you've got these bits to contend with but once you start getting towards the middle that's when you can just essentially just push push it along Whenever I'm with you I am alright There's something about the way you make me feel inside Counting down the days till we fly away Heading to the sun, only you and me are oh, Don't wanna waste another day Being stuck here in this place No, I don't wanna hold your hand in mine Watch the sunset in your eyes Baby, I wanna still act like we are 22 right now Right, so we are near the end of finishing this now. Just trying to think of the best way to tack it down. Right, so we've actually finished up and tore off the excess of the sunstrip. There's some impurities and some blemishes that I do need to sort out, so I'll get on with them now. And just finishing it up with the squeegee pad. Doing it by yourself is not the easiest of things, so I would recommend if you've got two people to do it, then do so, or just a second pair of hands, just to help towards that back end of the bit. You might have seen me struggling a little bit, but we'll have a look at it once I've tidied it up, and then we'll start with the rubber splitter. So just so you guys can see what it looks like from the inside of the vehicle, it's probably a little bit further down than at first imagined, but that's a difficulty when you've got a universal one, simply because you don't know where it's about to end. But for the most part, it doesn't look too bad. I've still got a lot of my visibility out front. I just won't be able to see any aeroplanes. But apart from that, I'm happy with it. Just a few little blemishes to fix, and then we're gonna move on to the rubber splitter underneath. Okay, so this is the rubber splitter. As you can see, it's got some 3M tape on the back here. It's actually quite a lot heavier than the ones that I've had before. But what you're supposed to do is lay it along the bottom of the bumper, 
underneath with this bit being the contact patch and then follow it all the way around if there's a corner or a curve then you're supposed to make a split and then it'll sort of bend around it but I haven't really had to do one I might have to do with this with it being so rigid but rigidity is not particularly a bad thing the only difficulty is uh, lining it up making the cuts straight down and clean and also making sure you get the middle right so you don't lose out on material either side Okay, so slight update on the car. The rubber splitter went terribly. It didn't even have any adhesive. It wouldn't stick to the underside of the bumper, even when we heated it up. So I will show you exactly where this rubber splitter has gone. Right in there. It is a little bit frustrating considering I bought one of eBay from a Fox ST for eight pounds and it stuck like shit to a blanket. I did think I had another one in the garage, which is just over here, but unfortunately I don't, so I think that's that parked for now until they decide to get a different one or a splitter. Bit frustrating really, really, really frustrating. So I just wanted to talk to you guys about getting the badges off because I had a bit of a pain doing it. So as you can see at the back of the car, there's a Toyota badge which has come off. That's not pinned or anything like that. As you can see the residue behind it there, as has the GT86, but if you have a look in the middle, there's actually two pins, there's one here and one there, so just bear that in mind if you're planning to take yours off. And if we move around to the front, this one was the worst one to get done, and that was simply because there's just a load of residue on there. There's two little pins there and there, um, I've unfortunately snapped one of them trying to pull it off, but it should be okay because it's going back on. Okay, so with the rubber splitter out of the way, my job now is to get rid of this residue on the badge. So what I'm going to be using is some hot water and a little soap. Ow, that is still very, very, very hot. Um, just to try and loosen it up a little bit. And then we're going to use a little squeeze that we used to put the sunstrip on just to try and pry some of this off. So I'm not going to say don't douse it, but douse it to your heart's content. Just make sure that the water's not too hot to touch and I don't want to damage the paint at all so it's cooled down a little bit now so I'm just going to see how I can get on with it see if we can get some of the residue off the more the better this badge is going back on anyway so I just want to make sure it's a clean surface for when the badge does go back on because they're going in for painting now um, should be done maybe tomorrow or the day after um, if you want to see what the results are follow me on Instagram which is just up here you'll see it at the beginning of the video as well anyway um, I will show you them in a video but I don't know when that will be probably next week or the week after found it the reason why I like this is because it tapers down and it tapers down so that I can get in with a little bit more precision than just a card and it would be a lot easier using something like Gugon but I don't have any and it's Sunday so chances are I probably won't be able to find any so I'm just going to carry on with what I've got now, I'll come back to you guys shortly once I've made some progress. And once we've done that I'm going to round the video off there. We didn't put the rubber lip on simply because it didn't stick. Um, I'm quite surprised at how bad the sticky was, so it must have been some fake 3M stuff. Um, it's quite hard to put it on because it's in like a little indent as well, so you can exactly take it out and put some more on. Um, I might just get a proper splitter um, and just wait till I've had the mods done just to then decide whether it's worth it or not. Okay, so a little bit of elbow grease and time later, as you can see, that's all being cleaned now. So there's no adhesive tape on there, and it's the same with the back. Let's go around and show you guys. You can all that car. So you see, there's no badges whatsoever on the back. It's all nice and clean and ready to put the new ones on. Okay, so the badges have been painted. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a nice gloss black i just have to be a little bit careful see i still just a little bit soft um i'm just going to go put these on and leave them to cure overnight just so they're on the car so what i've actually done is i put some um some adhesive tape on the back before painting them just so that when the paint i didn't have to be fiddling around pressing it down or or anything like that but i think it's come out quite nicely to be fair see if the camera wants to uh wants to focus like that you can see a nice little gloss there but we'll go out to the car we'll put these on we'll have a round up at the end and then that's that video done okay so we're just putting this badge back on now as i mentioned there is tunes make it easier to get the badge back on although mine has snapped i don't want to push too hard because the paint is still soft but just enough to get the adhesives to stick this is that one done let's go on to the back right so i was talking about the gt86 badge 
in the middle of the I think I'm going to Toyota badge on initially, see what it looks like. I will line up the GT86 badge underneath, but I might not stick it on. But let's have a look to see what it looks like. Okay, so we're back in the garage. Two out of three things have been done. I just want to apologise in advance if the audio hasn't been the greatest on this video. I was trying out a new couple of things and having a bit of technical setbacks along the way and it wasn't something that I could go back and do again considering what I was actually doing to the car. With that aside I'd really like to find out your thoughts on what you thought of the GoPro camera. Does it help you guys? Does it give you a bit of a better perspective than just watching me do it? Obviously there's going to be a bit of both on the channel. Just let me know down in the comments. So all in all, I'm quite happy with the things that have been done. The sunstrip looks great. I actually went out and came back before fitting the badges again, just to give them a little more time to dry. I was really impressed with how the sunstrip looked. It's definitely gonna look great with a gloss black roof as well, because it will match all the way across. I'll put some pictures on the screen now of what the badges look like now I've had them on. The rear one could have done with a little bit more time to dry, and that's just completely my fault, but it looks all right, to be fair. As always, if you've enjoyed this content, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video. The button is down there. I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the video and that button is down there. I'd also like it if you could follow my social media channels. I'll put them on here. But there's a lot of exciting stuff coming for this car over the next couple of weeks. It should be this week, fingers crossed, dependent on the British Postal Service. But it's going to be a very exciting time to be a part of the channel. Now, I don't know when these videos are going to come out. It does depend on A, when they arrive, B, when I can get them fitted, and C, in which order they will get fitted in. But anyways, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll see you next time.